How did your experience through losing your wife assist you in your counselling role? Obviously it helped in areas with grief counselling. Uh, I've experienced a lot of things in my life, uh, a lot of things that were unexpected, a lot of things that were unplanned, but it's in dealing with those things and coping with those things and learning coping skills and being taught coping skills that you acquire the knowledge and the ability to help other people. The drought we're seeing at the moment is probably one of the worst in Australian history and it's at least heading that way. How different is it from your previous counselling experiences speaking with farmers in such a crisis? Well this drought is the, uh, the worst since Federation a lot of people are saying and certainly in some areas of the state it's been going for six years or more so it is definitely the worst and the farming generation, the current farming generation has never experienced it. Uh, they have to go back to the history books. They can't even talk to their fathers or their grandfathers because even their fathers and grandfathers didn't experience anything as severe as this. And in normal circumstances, the farming community helps the farming community. Farmers are very, very resilient and uh, self-sustainable. Uh, they reach out and help each other when there's a crisis. But uh, this drought is so severe that the farmers don't have enough resources of their own, let alone having re resources to share with other people. What have you witnessed in the communities where you've been counselling farmers as far as the effect it's having on them? Well, it's emotionally destructive for a start. Uh, certainly financially destructive at the, the very base level. They're losing their livestock, they're losing their livelihood, uh, they're battling just to get water and uh, food for their stock. Uh, it's just crippling all around. And the psychological ramifications of the drought uh, will continue for years to come. It's, uh, it'll, there's a long, long recovery period ahead. That's it, even if the drought broke tomorrow. When you encounter people actually acknowledging they need help, where are they at emotionally, psychologically? Unfortunately, most people seek help from counsellors when it's, uh, uh, it's not too late, but uh, uh, they've stretched it too far. Uh, they've exhausted themselves uh, and they, 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 they reach out for help. And it's, it's typical though, it's uh, some, something that men particularly suffer from. Uh, they only seek help when it's absolutely necessary, when it's the absolute last straw. And psychologically, uh, with counselling and other aspects of, of that sort of assistance, the sooner you see, seek help, uh, the better it is in the long run. Uh, you, you should not allow things to go too far. Why do you think men particularly find it so difficult to ask for help? I think it probably is uh, something that goes back generations. And certainly people of my generation, uh, we were told to toughen up. That was the basic attitude. Uh, men were men, women were women. Men had to be tough and men had to put up with whatever was going on uh, and cope regardless. And we're still overcoming that in society. We are, we're working toward it, which is a good thing, but there's still a lot of that left in our communities. There's also quite a stigma still attached to any mental health issue, particularly if you're struggling with depression or anxiety. What role does that play in the resistance? People are very reluctant to admit that they have a psychological problem. They're very reluctant to seek help. Uh, they suppress those feelings and when they suppress them, the feelings only get deeper and uh, people, people get further into a hole uh, that they find they can't get out of alone. Uh, and it is by suppressing things that things are just exacerbated. What's the difference between being a counsellor out in the field as you are and perhaps being you know, a psychologist? Well a psychologist, uh, they're at a, another level, they deal with people with more extreme problems uh, and over a longer period of time. A counsellor can go in and talk to a person and do uh, a number of sessions and can then equip that person to find their own recovery path and I think that's basically it. it we're, we're dealing at a face-to-face -face basic level. It's hard to get people to uh, say that they need help. We look for connections in the community. We look for CWA organisations or other groups that are in the, the community that know these individuals. You can't just go up and knock on someone's door and say, we're here. And uh, the communities are being good at introducing us. A lot of the wives are very good at pushing their husbands forward too. The wives are prompting their husbands to get the help they need. Apart from conversations, what else have you been bringing to these communities? With Rural Aid, we've been bringing, obviously, the uh, Buy a Bale campaign's been highly successful, so we've been feeding the, the cattle and the sheep for these farmers. We're providing water, we're providing groceries. Uh, there's a whole range of services that Rural Aid provides. 
You just had someone turn up on your doorstep here. And that was a lady who picked up a food voucher and a petrol voucher and some groceries too that we had as well on, on the side there. So she wanted help, needed help and was prepared to ask for it and we're only too happy to give it to her. Rural Aid's a charity uh, and it's a very well-funded charity, it's a very well-supported charity and it's only supported and funded because it's doing its job. Uh, we're out there in the community on a day-to-day -day basis. We're reaching farmers at the, their point of need, at their time of need. And as I've, I've often said with Rural Aid, uh, we can't make it rain, but we can take away some of the pain.